Hello and welcome to Adobe Photoshop and this week's tutorial where we're going to be focusing on the basics of sharpening if you'll excuse the pun and we're going to be doing that inside of Photoshop CS2 now the first thing I'm going to do is to bring this image up on the screen it's one that I created just a few moments ago and consists of two squares side by side one being a lighter grey and the other a darker grey and I'm going to use this image to demonstrate the various sharpening filters we have access to inside of Photoshop and how each of them works so let's start off by zooming into this image right here where the two shades of grey meet up just like that and then I'm going to go up to the filter menu and select sharpen and then I'm presented with five different sharpening filters which may be different to what you see on your system depending of course on what version of Photoshop you're currently running now I'd like you to go ahead and select the filter called sharpen and I've done that primarily just to show you how sharpening works inside of Photoshop and this is pretty much a perfect example what sharpening does is increase the contrast between neighboring pixels so you can see where the two shades of grey meet it's made the dark grey darker and the light grey lighter producing a more noticeable edge or a higher contrasting edge between the two shades now I'm going to hit control Z to undo that and then I'm going to go back up to my filter menu and select sharpen once again and this time I'm going to hit sharpen edges and you can see that what we get is the same kind of sharpening as before the only difference being that the filter we've selected this time is looking for areas of your image that already have generous amounts of contrast and remember edges by their very definition are areas of high contrast which gives it the benefit of looking for the edges within your particular image okay we're going to hit control Z again to undo this sharpen edges filter and then go back up to filter menu and select sharpen again and this time we're going to select sharpen more now I'm not going to insult anybody's intelligence by going through this function in any detail whatsoever suffice to say that we are now sharpening the image more than we did with the standard sharpen filter and another thing to note once we have any of the previous three filters applied would be the option of applying the same filter on top of itself by reselecting the filter in the filters menu or by hitting control F on the keyboard which applies the last used filter and you can see that by hitting control F a few times I've doubled and then trebled the amount of sharpening I've applied so I'm just going to hit control alt Z just a few times now to bring back the original image and there we have it now although the sharpen sharpen more and sharpen edges filters are very simple to use that's also their biggest disadvantage as they don't come with any controls or settings you can't ever be sure really about how much sharpening you're actually adding to your image they've also been around since the early days of Photoshop so basically they were designed to work with low resolution images that doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't use them at all it just means that there are better ways to sharpen your image inside of Photoshop so let's go back up to the filters menu and select sharpen again and we have two more options to choose from now if you're not running Photoshop CS2 then you won't be able to see smart sharpen filter in the sharpen menu and that's because that's a new function only available in this version of Photoshop you should however see the unsharp mask which has been Photoshop's number one sharpening tool since its introduction quite a few years back now I've got to say that the unsharp mask is a really fantastic filter but in um, this version of Photoshop it has been surpassed by the brilliance of the smart sharpen filter which we'll be taking a look at in a more advanced sharpening tutorial okay so let's select the unsharp mask and straight away we've got an improvement on the other sharpening filters discussed earlier because we have a dialog box containing different settings for increasing and decreasing the amount of sharpening we're using and before I go any further I must just say that although this filter is called the unsharp mask it doesn't actually have anything to do with unsharpening 
or masking inside of Photoshop for that matter. The name comes from an old process, so I'm told, used to sharpen photographic film by blurring a film negative and combining it with the original film positive which would greater highlight the edges inside the photograph and hence give the appearance that the photograph had been sharpened. OK, now we've cleared that up, let's take a look at the dialog box. We've got a preview checkbox here. Now when this is checked, it lets us preview the adjustments we're making inside the actual image. We've also got this preview panel here that lets us keep a closer eye on what's happening with the image itself. Now more importantly, we have free sliders down here for adjusting the amount of sharpening we're adding. We have an amount slider which lets us determine how much contrast we're going to add to the edges we're going to affect. In other words, as we saw earlier, how much lighter and how much darker the edges are going to become is determined by the amount slider. Next we have a radius slider and that lets us increase the size of the edges. So the larger the radius value, the wider the edges become. Finally, the threshold slider, which is measured in brightness values, lets us determine how many brightness values apart the edges must be before they actually are considered edges. The higher the threshold, the less sharpening that will occur. Generally, this is the slider that you're going to want to leave alone as much as you can and just decrease the other two values should you decide that you've over sharpened your image. OK, so I'm going to zoom into 800% here and then raise my amount value to 200% to give me some pretty dark transitions. Now we're not seeing anything yet because our radius value is set to 0 0.1 and if I go ahead and increase that gradually by scrolling my mouse on the word radius you can see that the size of the edges are starting to increase. They're not getting any darker because I'm not changing the amount value but they are getting larger. OK, I'm going to leave that at around 3 pixels and then just to show you what the threshold does I'm going to increase it and you can see that we're losing straight away some of the sharpening that contains a tonal difference of less than whatever we're inputting here and I'm going to input say 40 levels or 40 brightness values. OK, I'm going to reset the threshold to 0. Next I'm going to decrease the amount value to 60 and now you can see that the radius of our edges are the same, 3 pixels but the edges are no longer as dark as they were because we've reduced that amount value. OK, I'm going to cancel out of here and then minimize the image. And I'm going to bring up another image entitled Kitten 1. And I just wanted to make you aware that sharpening in Photoshop would never be able to repair an image like this one. There's way too much blurring going on and we've lost way too many details to be able to bring them back. So I'm going to close that image and bring up another image called Kitten 2 which we're going to be able to improve in Photoshop. So let's go up to our filter menu once again and the sharpen submenu and select our unsharp mask. Now I'm going to drag and zoom the preview so it's set on Mr. Kitten's head and I'm going to raise the amount to around 190% and I'm going to set the radius to about 0 0.8 pixels and leave the threshold at 0. Now if I click and hold the left mouse button inside the preview pane it's going to give me the image before we made any alterations and then release it to see the image with the values below applied. So if you're satisfied with the image and I am at the moment so I'm going to click OK to accept the settings now I'm just going to zoom in on the head and so we can see what's going on and click Control Z and see the image before the alterations and then click Control Z again to see the image with the unsharp mask applied and of course depending on the resolution of video that you're watching this tutorial at you may or may not be able to see the true effect of the unsharp mask there. Well I hope you found this tutorial on basic sharpening to be helpful Thanks very much for watching.